Hey guys, how you doing? So, Plants vs. Zombies as a franchise has been played and enjoyed by millions of people around the world. I'm sure a lot of you know that already, but let me elaborate. Many demographics from many countries love these games. But do you want to know what country in particular really loves these games? China. That's right. For those who didn't know, China loves these games. And because of that very reason, it would probably be fair to assume that PopCap would make a push towards that demographic, right? Well, guess what happened with PVZ in China? Lots of games were made. So many, in fact, that even if I wanted to, I would not be able to cover all of them in one video. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to focus on a few individual games that are and were, for the most part, exclusive to the People's Republic of China. Ultimately, I want to see if any of these games are actually worth trying if they're still available, because honestly, they're a pretty niche topic. I'll follow these on a timeline of sorts, just to make the process of covering them easier. So, without any further ado, let's jump right into our first game. That being... Okay, sorry, just one more big disclaimer before we really get into things here. Most of these games are completely discontinued, and a lot of them have been gone for at least a few years. This one in particular was discontinued in 2014, which was nearly a decade ago at this point. So I apologize if I get any information wrong on this one or any of these other games that we cover, because honestly, it's pretty hard to find information on how some of these games worked. With that out of the way, this game seemed pretty interesting. It's basically an expanded version of PvZ1, with a a couple of extra features and game modes. We'll cover some of the new features first, starting with a couple of changes to the core gameplay. So, this game has a level up system for plants, which is pretty interesting, though I don't exactly know how it works. There were also some changes to certain plants, like being able to place upgraded plants as genuine plants without needing the first one. That's totally not broken. There's other changes here and there, but that's the gist of the basic changes. And of course, there weren't just changes to the original PBZ1 experience, there were also some new features. Too. First of all, this game did fast forwarding before PvZ2 did. Wow, what a trendsetter. You may also notice that this game looks really unpolished, which isn't quite a feature, but it's definitely noticeable. I think it happened because it was a web game, maybe? I don't quite know. This game also has a new shop system, where you could buy various extra plants and stuff using currencies, which looks something like this. From what I can gather, this currency is obtainable by beating levels in various game modes, which happens to be the next topic. These game modes seemed interesting, and a good example example of that is titled Rampage. This mode is basically a score tracking mode that incentivizes competition, and you can clearly see that with some of the gameplay for it. Wow, that is insane. This is something you're gonna hear from me multiple times in this video, but this mode has a lot going on, such as some vases being on the board as well as a timer, and there's power-ups too. Jeez! Unfortunately, it's pretty hard to find a whole lot of anything regarding how this game mode worked, but it looked crazy. There was also a challenge mode, which is where a lot of this gameplay is actually coming from. With this mode, it seems like there's just a list of challenge levels that you can beat. And it kind of just seems like PvZ1, but harder. This is actually a good segue into some of the new faces you might be seeing right about now. As you can see, there is quite a few new characters here. A couple of examples would be the Icy Fume Shroom, which was a premium plant that acted like a normal fume shroom, just Icy, the Mustache Zombie, which is apparently two times stronger than a regular one, and even stuff like the Pickled Pepper, which was a premium version of the Jalapeno that killed all zombies in a vertical column. Hmm, that one sounds familiar. But in general, it seems like most, if not all of these new characters are basically just altered or stronger versions of existing plants and zombies, so I won't cover much more of them here. And I'm especially not covering this would-be chomp thing. It looks hideous. No, wait, I didn't mean that, no way. But what I will cover is possibly the most interesting part of this game, that being the overworld map. Yes, this game actually has an overworld. From what I could tell, this map was actually customizable, with the player being able to change the town to their liking. This map also allowed the player access to some of the already mentioned game modes, as well as being able to access the normal levels and such. Something that I didn't really mention up to this point is this game's way of accessing old levels, and it looks something like this. Apparently this guy is Crazy Dave's younger brother, Brave Dave. Huh. Interesting. I could sit here and talk about all of the other crazy features that this game had, but frankly, it's not much more interesting than a lot of the other games in this video. It's also really difficult to find evidence of the features and content of this game nowadays, which definitely doesn't help. So, what's next? Well, I believe that game is called... This next game is, uh, PBZ1. Only now it has a Great Wall theme. 
Okay, moving on to the all right, there's a little more to it than that. Originally released on May 18th of 2012, this game is basically PvZ1, only now it's reskinned to more closely resemble the Great Wall aesthetic. Well, it's almost PvZ1. See, this game has some extra content, so let's cover it. First of all, this actually has nothing to do with the content, but this game was seemingly available in more countries than just China, so technically, it's still a Chinese PvZ game. But for some odd reason, it was available outside of China as well. Just felt like I should say that before we get to the good stuff. I swear, I'm not cheating. Anyways, this game has a survival mode called the China Museum, and it's a specialty survival mode collection. These modes use mostly exclusive zombies to this game, such as Encourager Gargs and Flower Thief Zombies. And I believe most of these are actually just reskins of normal zombies. There's still a couple of exceptions though, like the assassin zombie, which doesn't look great honestly. But aside from that mode and the new zombies, this game also has the returning future star that I completely forgot to mention in Social Edition. Whoops! It's interesting to see that this is the only returning special plant from that game, even if there's no reason for it to be here, especially since it literally just replaces starfruit. Oh, and this thing also got a special level just for it, which is pretty funny. Another change in this game is a new shop system, that being the mall, as the wiki puts it. The mall is apparently an in-level shop where you can buy various power-ups, and that's kind of all there is to it. Not the most interesting thing in the world, but something to note about it is that it appears in more than one game. Finally, this doesn't have too much to do with the extra content, but I feel like I should mention it. This game eventually got renamed to PvZ Journey to the West, which is actually the title of a Chinese novel. This game also includes worlds and levels based off of that novel, but I'm not covering that in this section, only because the next game also had these levels. And not only does the next game have these levels, but they're also more expanded in this one because, well, the next game has more mechanics. I know it's confusing, but trust me, it'll be easier to cover there. Overall, there's definitely more to this game that I didn't cover here, but I can't really talk about some of the extra stuff. Because despite this game still being very much playable, I don't really want to take the risk of downloading a random APK. Sorry, but I've already risked a lot for this video, which is something you'll see later on, so I'm not going to go any further with this little game. Now, that being said, our next game on the timeline is definitely much more worth the risk, and that game is called... Oh my god, can we stop with the PvZ1 clones? Jokes aside, this game is actually really packed with content this time around. Released in February of 2013, this is yet another PvZ1 game, only this one has a completely new set of mechanics to work with. Like, a lot of new mechanics. First of all, before we get into the fun stuff, I'm calling this game Endless Edition. It's what the game was originally called, and while the name was changed later down the line, this is more so for simplicity compared to Great Wall Edition. Sorry, but I need to cover my back for this one, because it's frequently called Journey to the West edition by some people, which is what Great Wall Edition renamed to, and also there's the I'm not here to bore you, let's move on. We'll start out with the elephant in the room. What the frick is wrong with that walnut? Well, that's not an ordinary walnut. That's a hero. Yes, there was a hero mechanic in this game. These heroes could basically be moved around anywhere, and it seems like they functioned like normal for the most part, aside from the nut. Seriously, why can it do that? These heroes can also be moved onto other plants, but they mostly just deactivate them. Besides that incredibly ambitious mechanic, there was also a good amount of new levels here too. Like, each base world had its level count increased to 13, with each new level acting like basically the second adventure playthrough with some seed slots picked for you. On top of that, there's also the previously mentioned Journey to the West levels here too. These levels are split into multiple worlds, with each world having 8 levels, with the last 3 levels in each also following those previous worlds mentioned. Now, I'm not entirely familiar with the story of Journey to the West, but I'm sure PopCap made a perfect adaptation in the game, so we're gonna roll with it. If we take a look at the levels themselves, you can see that they are sort of normal, only they have some extra gimmicks and special zombies every once in a while. Some of the zombies in particular include a Red Boy Imp, which is a zombie that shoots fire at plants, a Fisherman Zombie, wow, these Chinese games were very ahead of their times, and a Skeleton Demon Zombie, which is a boss that could turn into other zombies. Oh, and speaking of bosses, the fifth level in each world seemed to be a boss fight, so that's pretty neat. But that's not all this game provides, oh no. There's also some new plants to counter the new zombies, as well as some PvZ2 plants. Oh my god, they look terrifying in this art style, jeez. There's even Ghost Pepper, which I'm not entirely convinced was even in PvZ2 when it was added to this game. Somehow, the PvZ2 plants actually retain their plant food effects, but some of them are changed and the way they work is kind of like how Mega Gatling P works, where they'll randomly activate their plant food effects. It's interesting, but overall not worth discussing more in this already big video. Oh, and one final thing to note about this game is the mall. It's back.
back and it also brings with it power-ups as well. I think these were also in Great Wall Edition, but it's interesting regardless. I mean, this is just excessive, come on. But overall, that's pretty much everything this game offers. It's just more content that has an emphasis on Journey to the West. As for when this game officially shut its doors, well, that's a bit of an interesting story. See, this game shut down at some point in 2015. Yeah, it was only around officially for two or less years, which is crazy. If you ask me, this is easily the best PBZ1 edition game out of the three, as it just has a lot more to offer. But luckily, we're done with the PBZ1 craze now, and we can finally move on to... So first of all, I can't confirm the story in the slightest, but according to the wiki, this game has a very interesting background that I just couldn't leave out of the video. Okay, so basically there was this PBZ clone game called Plants Gone Wild, and trust me, you didn't hear that wrong. That's actually what it was called. But anyways, this game was apparently really popular. So much so that PopCap Shanghai just had to do something about it. So then, online was essentially made to counter this game, and I kid you not, but apparently PopCap took assets from Plants Gone Wild. Again, I can't 100% confirm this, but if it's true, then it's gotta be one of the funniest cases of malicious compliance I've ever seen. Anyways, online was first available on December 9th of 2013 for beta testing, with the official release being on July 18th of 2014. The interesting part of this game just happens to be with its idea. It's an incredibly expanded version of PBZ2, at least during that time period. To give you a minor idea on just how big this one is, I'm just gonna scroll through the page for items in the game on this wiki. Oh my god. It's not stopping. Okay, I'm not gonna reach the end with this voiceover, you get the idea. So, take just about everything I say with a grain of salt, because I've been reading and researching this one for a couple of weeks now, and I still don't understand a lot of it, but I can at least sort of explain one game mode, which we'll get to soon. Speaking of that, I think we'll tackle discussing this game with three different sections based off of the three game modes, and we'll start with Normal Mode, the one I was referring to before. This mode plays pretty closely to the tower defense games that we all know and love. There's a lot of levels for this mode, but essentially, it's kind of what you'd expect. Well, okay, partially what you'd expect. So, starting off with some pretty obvious stuff, this game runs on Flash. Yep, that thing. And oh boy, does it show. This game also works off of a 25 sun system, which is pretty interesting, as this game does have PVC2 plants in it, so it's interesting to see how different that one change makes this game feel. There's no power-ups here as well, but honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Aside from those tweaks, that's about everything different for the core gameplay, so let's move on to the bigger changes. First of all, there's normal and elite levels, and elite levels are basically tougher versions of normal levels. That's pretty minuscule, but I figured I should mention it because it's a good starting point for some of the other things this game does. There's some new plants and zombies here, which shouldn't really be surprising at this point. Some examples are the Bubble Flower, which is a plant that shoots bubbles at zombies, and the Desert Death Zombie, which makes lines of quicksand in his lane and the lanes next to him that push any zombies walking on them closer to the end of the lawn. Cool. There's also a leveling system for the plants in this mode, but it's a lot more subtle than it is in the international PvZ2. There's definitely some big upgrades, such as being able to place a pea shooter on top of another pea shooter to make a repeater, but that's an exception. Generally speaking, this game is more so a test of what's to come in the future, but we'll get there when we get there. Oh, and on the topic of game tweaks, this game features PvZ2 world maps, but they're not the ones you OG PvZ2 players remember. Every single one here is remade from the ground up, but it's not like that would make much of a difference because they cut Wild West and added Far Future instead. They didn't even use the unused map for that one, so they're lost I suppose. Interestingly enough, Wintermelon is one of the only returning Wild West plants, but it's only back because of the VIP system, which is funnily enough one of these systems that ends up being recreated in most games moving forward. But yeah, this game mode is overall neat. I can't cover everything here, but for the most part, it's pretty much PvZ2 with some changes here and there. It actually even works a little bit, which is how I was able to get most of this footage, but it's not easy to put together, so frankly, unless you really, really want to experience PvZ online, don't do what I did and spend a good hour or two setting up this game game only for it to run one tutorial level. It's not worth it, but it's functional, which is something that I don't think I could say about this next game mode, the adventure mode. This game mode functioned like a turn-based RPG, which is a very interesting approach to the PvZ series. Obviously, PvZ heroes would eventually come out and adapt this type of format into a more Hearthstone-like style, but this game did it first. And honestly, based on available footage, it did it decently. 
So from what I could tell, this game will let you pick up to six plants, and with these plants, you would have to fight against up to seven zombies. I believe these fights also autoplay, so keep that in mind for why the gameplay looks this way. This is about as turn-based as it gets. I mean, look at the gameplay. There is a lot going on here, and obviously, I can't cover all of this in one section either. I mean, what is even going on for half of this? And honestly, that's a good question to ask for most of this game mode. Seriously, the more I've researched this one, the more confused I've gotten. There is so much crap to worry about here. We've got the plant leveling returning, only now it looks like this. What am I even looking at? I feel like even if I was able to play the game fully, I would not understand half of what's going on. Something that I do understand a little bit is the combination system, as apparently some plants used together actually get and or give buffs. It's a pretty neat idea, but on top of everything else happening in this game mode, it almost seems like it's extra death for the sake of having death, if that makes any sense at all. Costumes also make an appearance in this mode apparently. They're usable in both normal and adventure mode, and apparently they provide buffs, sort of like how another game we'll cover soon does it? That's the message I'm getting from this comment reply to somebody asking for help on an ancient Egypt's level. Yeah, I don't think I could do this game justice in the slightest. Looks cool, and I'm sure if I could get my hands on this game, I could actually explain this one better. But I'm not sure if this game mode is even that playable. At least with the main tower defense mode, it is more than functional, provided you have a program that allows you to edit level files. But this one? I just don't know. It might be possible, but if it is, then it's barely possible. And frankly, I'm not a tech wizard. And asking for help on setting up levels for a game this obscure feels borderline pointless. So let's just move on from this headache to the final main mode, that being the map. The map is seemingly a set of areas where you could set up a house and actually use the deck of plants you have for adventure mode to harvest coins for you, according to the wiki. From what it seems, this is basically a farm area that kind of reminds me of modern day mobile games that make you wait for a task to complete before making more progress, unless you want to spend some good old money. Jokes aside, this mode still does have some substance to it. For example, if you were mining in an area that's close to another player's house, you could actually initiate a battle with them using your plant deck. Whoever wins keeps the mine that they want over, and the other player gets kicked out. This concept is actually pretty neat, though the idea of people fighting in a post-apocalyptic world over gold mines is a bit of a weird concept. Oh, and the reason why I had mentioned the areas plural is because these work like a tier system. Basically, the player could select an area to be in, and the areas themselves are each a certain difficulty but the rewards would scale because of that. The only way to relocate in this mode is with a certain item, so you couldn't just do it for free or anything. This mode is overall pretty interesting, but I think it's more so an extension of the last part of the game that I intentionally didn't mention yet, that being the town. Up to this point, I've been only talking about the actual game, but oh my god, the town. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I can't explain what all of this is. I think this alone would take around 10 minutes to explain, and I'm not here to bore you guys, so I think I'll just explain some of what you're looking at just to give you an idea of what this area is. The town has a lot of features to it, kind of like a hub world of sorts. Almost everything you see on this map here leads into a bunch of activities and such, and a good example of this is the Magical Exchange, where you can exchange plant coins into plant puzzle pieces, which are used for plant leveling. There's also modes for fighting and such, like this PvP arena I found. Lots of shops and currencies, and while these don't work nowadays, I'm sure they were packed with goodies. Oh, and to think that I haven't even mentioned the zombies yet. I'm just going off of what I found in the menus, but apparently you could have also used zombies somewhere in this game? Like, what? I think I'm just gonna step away from this game now. There is literally too much to cover here for one video on a brief overview of these games. So let's finally go over its availability. This game closed its doors in 2018, and somehow almost all of the code for the game was wiped in the process. Thankfully, somebody managed to get their hands on a bit of the code, so that's how it's even playable nowadays. And luckily from here, the preservation of these games actually gets better, with a good example of that being... So, PBZ All-Stars is a really interesting game for many reasons. I think the best way to start this one off is discussing some of the history behind it before it officially released. This game had multiple betas in 2014, which was actually happening around the time PBZ Online officially released. And really, the only reason why this one is slightly further along the timeline is because it came out one to two months later. Yeah, that probably wasn't the best release schedule for either game, and I'm sure that negatively impacted at least one of them. So, getting into the specifics of things, let's start out with the story for this one, because I feel like I just have to read it the way the wiki wrote it because it's such a fever dream. To quote, Primitive snail zombie sees the plant sleeping, so it calls the other zombies. Meanwhile, their leader points to the player's house and shouts, so all of the zombies then come closer to the plants. Suddenly, some asteroids fall down into the earth. 
Venus Flytrap emerges from one of these asteroids, Ball Cactus appears from another one, and Popcorn Pole appears from a third asteroid. As the other plants become fond of these new plants, all of them attack the zombies, creating an epic battle between gardens and graveyards. Wow. That unironically makes this game way cooler than online. Sorry, I'm being a little hostile towards that game, but how could I not? This game is sick! As I had alluded to a bit before, All Stars is seemingly really well documented, and that's not a shock to me because it is still very playable on Android, which is awesome. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the actual game. This game uses a gameplay system that actually resembles the adventure mode from online quite a bit. Here you basically fight off hordes of zombies, the catch being that it uses a turn-based battle system of sorts. Plants automatically attack, and zombies sometimes attack right after, that kind of thing. This game is pretty fun compared to what online's take on this looks like, and I'm not gonna lie, I actually think it's because of the presentation. Something about this just looks better, I don't really have a better term for it than that. This game also has a leveling up system, which is no different than how online handled it, but this one actually evolves plants in a way. So as an example, I had mentioned in a previous video of mine that Scaredy Shroom, yes that one, actually has a use in this game. It's apparently an evolution of Puff Shroom, which can then evolve into a Fume Shroom. And with this system, the game takes some serious creative liberties with some of the plants here. Sunflower's final stage is a triplet flower, Blover evolves into a Fan Blover, and god dang Coffee Bean of all things evolves into a Mocha Bean. There's your fun little trivia for today, Coffee Bean's existence in this game. Now obviously there's a lot more going on than this, like most of the time plants can only be placed on certain areas of the first few columns, there's equipment that buffs plants, and there's even an anger meter that activates the given angry plants plant food effects. There's also a power up here, but I want to discuss that thing in the next game. It's really interesting stuff, but it's not exactly a system that I completely understand despite being able to fully play the game. But something that I do understand is the variety in levels here. There's a surprising amount of worlds in this game. Like, they made a Neon Mixtape Tour world. The best online could do was, oh, I don't know, like 40 worlds for adventure mode? Mid. Check out these item drops for these guys. Yeah, exciting! Woo! Sorry, I'm getting carried away. There's also a lot to do here, and I think the best way I could show you that is with the various other aspects of this game. So as a basic example, there was this tab called the Challenge tab that basically allowed you to fight stuff ranging from marigolds to zombies to even bosses from worlds if you were daring enough. This would be done for rewards and such, and it could be done two times a day or three if you wanted to pay for another chance with gems, one of the currencies in this game. Another cool example would be the Endless mode in this game, which worked in a really interesting way. Basically, you would select seven of your plants to go with you, and the game would place those down automatically while you had to wait for other plants you owned to come to you via a conveyor belt, all while zombies and bosses periodically attack you. This is a really neat idea, and honestly, it's a shame that something like this never made it into another game. So, to finish discussing this game, let's talk about its cancellation. This game officially lost support on July 11th of 2020, and with this, apparently all official data for the game was wiped alongside it. But as you can see, this game is still very much playable, so what happened? Well, in case you couldn't tell up to this point, this game just happens to be an Android game. And not only that, but the final version of the game is the only one affected by the cancellation. You can literally boot up an older version of the game, and for the most part it'll be fine, which is pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of found myself a little addicted to this game, so let's just move on to arguably the most well-known game in this timeline, which is none other than... <laughs> Ah yes, the Chinese version of PBZ2. There is a lot to talk about here, so let's just start off with the basics, that being when it was first introduced to us. This game came out in 2013, more specifically in August for iOS and September for Android. Now you might be asking, why is this game so far down in the timeline? Well, it's quite simple. It's still alive. Every other game wasn't just being placed in the timeline based off of where they began. They've also been ranked accordingly based off of where they lost support. And because this game is still kicking, it's the one I wanted to save for later, simply because it's just easier. I mean seriously, from the time where I've gotten this idea to the point where this video was being made, they've announced three new plans to be added to the game. Come on, I have enough on my plate already. Jokes aside, I'm gonna try my best to explain what this game is and some of the stuff within it. Luckily for me, that first bit is not the hard part. It's literally PPC2, only now there's a lot more worlds, 
a lot more plants and zombies, more events, and to top it all off, worse balancing, because having over 242 plants is obviously going to cause some problems. But I'll save that discussion for later, as I want to talk about some of the core gameplay changes first. One you might have noticed immediately is the complete removal of the power-up system for the most part. It's all been replaced by this tactical kook, which can be purchased with 15 gems, which increments higher and higher the more you buy it. When bought, it'll do massive damage to the board and hit every zombie on the screen. I actually haven't see much gameplay of people using this thing, which is probably a testament to either how easy the game is, or how useless the kook is. Either way, it's still interesting. Another gameplay switch-up has to do with the partial removal of the speed-up button. In its place is a system where you can call in waves faster by pressing a button with a flag symbol, which is pretty neat. Now, I don't entirely know why they decided to lock this stupid button behind a paywall, but whatever. It's fine. Okay, it's not fine, I'm mad about it, but still. Oh, and on that topic of interesting replacements, the leveling system has been reworked here too. Instead of having ridiculously high level ceilings, this game makes it a simple tier system that's only capable of going up to 5. And do you remember that one remark I made in the leveling section for online? Yeah, this game is what I was referring to then, as every level a given plant gets some genuine unique buffs along with an HP and damage output increase. That's really neat. This system is actually necessary in the game itself too, as Zombies also level up much more frequently here, as seen in this game's higher star levels. Oh, and for the worlds that contain these levels? Well, we've got some pretty neat new ones here, such as Sky City, which literally turns the game into a Rotobaga simulator without going to Big Wave Beach. There's also some more interesting traditional worlds, like Steam Ages. This one is pretty neat, though it's not complete. Again, like with the balancing, we'll get to that. And I guess now would also be a good time to further elaborate on some of the new plants and zombies as well. Starting with the plants, we've got some returning from PvZ1, like Cobb Cannon, which works very similarly to how it did in that game. There's some new world exclusive plants, like Berry Blaster, which shoots a berry every few seconds to do decent damage. And we even have flat out exclusive plants here, such as Mon Kiwi, which throws a god dang bar at zombies that deals really good damage. There's a lot to look at, and you mean to tell me that there's more on the way? Oh my god. There's also a lot of new zombies in this game, but honestly, I don't think most of them are worth mentioning, aside from the fact that quite a few of them are broken which could also be said about the plants. I swear we'll get to it soon. Honestly, there's some pretty good changes and new additions here, and I do appreciate the differences between this game and International PvZ 2, but we're not done yet. No, no, no. We're just getting started. You know, something that I never really mentioned in the other parts of this video is that a lot of these games use puzzle pieces as ways to get plants and level them up. Honestly, the reason I didn't even mention it is because a lot of those games are now defunct, but this one is still alive, so yeah, there it is. Another pretty interesting switch up has to do with costumes. In online, I had mentioned that costumes had buffs for the plants in that game. Well, that idea is also present in this game too. A lot of the costumes in this game primarily buff the plant food effect for the plants, which is pretty neat. But I think we should now move on to some of the bigger new stuff, because it would be wrong of me to not mention, well, this. So there's a lot more events and game modes in this game. Like, a lot more. Just to give you a few examples of what I mean, there's an event going on at the moment where, no joke, you're basically playing BTD battles. I mean seriously, this UI alone should tell you just about everything you need to know about this one. There's also semi-frequent events that are similar to Thind events, but these often take you to completely new places, like the Zomboss fight from PvZ1? God dang! There's even Vasebreaker that sometimes comes back as a whole event! Dude, I had forgotten it was even in PvZ2, with how minuscule it is in our version of the game. China just flat out said, nah, we can make it more interesting. And that's crazy! It's wild to see how much content this game actually has. And... That's kind of a good starting point for the final thing I want to talk about with this game, and something that ultimately plagues these games as a whole, that being the unpolished nature of everything, really. Surely you guys have at least noticed it, but in case you somehow haven't, these games, and especially this one, leave a lot to be desired in certain areas of the games themselves. I mentioned previously how the balancing wasn't great in this game, but truthfully, it goes deeper than that. We're talking like half of the new plants are essentially outclassed by other plants before having a chance to level up. Not only that, but those new worlds I had mentioned are also just as unpolished. I mean, look, three of them aren't even finished yet. That's inexcusable. The same can be said for some of the events as well, such as the nostalgia trip that is the Zomboss fight. It just sucks to see that this game, and really all of these games, just feel incomplete in a way. And I think that's a good note to end on for the games themselves, so let's move on to the conclusion. Wait a minute, that doesn't feel right. Isn't there another game on the timeline? Oh yeah! 
wow, I genuinely forgot this game existed. And can you really blame me? Look at it. This looks like a genuine knockoff of early PVZ3. But regardless, I have to discuss it a little bit, so fine. Let's talk about this game. This one presumably came out around a time that PVZ3 was being soft launched, so 2020. The gameplay itself is pretty basic. You essentially defend your house against zombies in a top down perspective, and yeah, that's kind of it. I know that seems like a basic explanation, but really, I think this gameplay shows you everything you could possibly want to know about this one. It's boring to watch, and frankly, it's boring to discuss. Look at this Captain America walnut texture sheet. What am I supposed to say about this? So you know what? That's what I'm going to leave it at for this game. Now let's actually move on to the conclusion. This timeline is interesting, to say the very least. I'm not gonna act like I'm too shocked about most of these games being killed off, but at the same time, it's weird to see how quickly support for some of these projects ended. Like, I don't entirely think Online deserved the four-year sentence it got, because despite being a confusing mess, it did seem to offer a lot of content. And really, I think all of these games offer a unique experience for the players that play them, for the most part. It's just a shame that most of them were canned. But with that being said, I think we can safely move on to the final conclusion on these titles. Where we the international audience missing out on anything good? I'd say yeah, definitely. These games might not be the most polished, but some of them seem like, or are, a lot of fun. It's a shame that this side of the PVZ franchise is really the only one that's kicking at this point, but hey, at least we're getting new content somewhere. So with that, I will be ending this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end, I really do appreciate it. This project is easily the biggest one I've ever tackled, and it's been pretty daunting. But if you guys want me to, I could honestly make more videos on the crazy game China has, because there's still like 20 plus games or something. They're not as big, but it's still a lot to get through. And I mean, come on, I know you're curious about Peak Shooter Bob here. If you'd like to, you could also let me know how you guys feel about the games covered in this video in the comments down below. You could also roast me and tell me what I got wrong, because let's face it, I definitely got some stuff wrong. And if you're new around here, and you like what you see, then subscribe to see more of my content. And I'll be seeing you guys in my next video. Peace.